In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the six sources of income that have helped me get to over $50,000 per month. Now, as a web designer, whether you have a nine to five or you're a freelancer, it's really risky to have only one source of income. So I'm gonna show you how I have diversified my income and found ways to make even more every single month with very minimal work. Now, aside from that, if you have not diversified your income or found other streams, you could be leaving as much as 50, 60, even 70% of your income on the table by not doing these things. So in this video, I'm gonna break down every single one and different ways that you can increase your income and your lifestyle. Let's get into it. So let's start by talking about my smallest source of income, which makes up about 3% of my total income, and that is affiliate marketing. Now, I am an affiliate for just a couple different tools that I use on a day-to-day -day and a monthly basis within my business. Some of those are Hello Bonsai, which is how I manage all the finances within my business. Another is SEMrush, which is an SEO tool that I use. Now, as an affiliate, the way that it works is I sign up to become an affiliate, and then I am able to have a custom link to these different services. I can put that link in my YouTube videos. I can pass it to different you know, students, people that I know, friends, family. And if people sign up using that link, then I get a small percentage of whatever they spend on those tools. So I don't do a whole lot of this. One of the biggest reasons is I don't like to just become an affiliate and throw links out for random services or tools that I don't actually use. So this is the biggest reason that I only have picked a select few of these. Um, this way I can, in good conscience, tell people like you who are watching this video that these are great tools that I highly recommend that you use. And again, this only makes up about 3% of my revenue, but I really enjoy doing this and being a spokesperson for tools and softwares that I feel are great for people like you and I. My second source of income is YouTube ad revenue, which makes up about 7% of my total monthly income. So it's not significant, and I will be the first to tell you that building this YouTube channel is definitely not the most profitable part of my business. But with that said, my YouTube channel does um, funnel people to different parts of my business that we're gonna talk about later in this video. But overall, the ad revenue is not substantial, especially within the niche that I am in where I'm talking about you know, running a digital agency, uh, agency, web design, SEO, those things aren't terribly profitable, not as profitable as say if I ran a channel about personal finance, um, but it still is significant enough where it kind of keeps me motivated when I'm putting out videos every month because it is a lot of work. But again, YouTube ad revenue makes up about 7% of my income and it's something that I hope to continue to grow until it makes up maybe closer to 10 to 20% of that total income. The other thing that's nice about this YouTube channel is even though I am kind of making these videos for individuals like you, web designers, SEOs, um, I still land a fair amount of clients from these videos because people find these videos and they think, okay, Peyton teaches other people how to do this, he must know his stuff, and so in turn they reach out to me and become clients. So there are different ways to make money with YouTube um, aside from the ad revenue. So if you're thinking about starting a channel, I highly recommend it. Don't go into it just to make the ad revenue. Go into it with the mindset that you're going to provide value for a specific group of people, but there are a ton of benefits to running a channel as a web designer. My third source of income is investing. Now, I don't do a whole ton of investing. I've got a brother and friends that do a lot with real estate. Um, I've yet to get into real estate mainly just because I've been lazy and focusing on my business. But for the time being, I have been putting a lot of my money in two places. The first is in Robinhood and just diversifying through a number of different stocks that I personally believe in. But the biggest majority of my money is invested in the S&P 500, which seems to be a pretty consistent and safe investment, um, especially over the last year and a half. It's really exploded. But like with any investment, there's always risk to it. And so this certainly is not financial advice, and I'm not the person that you would wanna take financial advice from, but we've seen pretty significant returns, and I feel like having your money in these different places, as long as you're willing to keep it there long-term and not panic when it drops and pull your money out, if your goal is to have it there long-term, you've got a pretty great chance of seeing a fairly large return, certainly much larger than if you were just to keep your money in a savings account, where most likely it's just going to lose value. 
All right, so my fourth stream of income is actually something new that I've just started within the last 12 months, and that is releasing courses and selling them to other web designers or marketing agency owners. And so I've currently got two courses out. My first course and most successful course is my SEO and Webflow. This is a course that teaches Webflow designers how to do SEO, what SEO is, how to sell SEO packages and work it into your web design business. And this has made me a substantial amount of money. Last I checked, I think these courses make up about 18% of my income. And the second course is Web Design Sales Mastery, which we just recently released here about a month ago. And that has been pretty successful. Um, I'm really excited about that course because sales courses are not for everyone, but I put a lot of effort into showing people how to do cold calls and inbound calls and strategy calls and how to generate leads and all these different things. These courses have generated a substantial percentage of my overall income and they're really fun to, to create. Once you create a course and if you can provide a ton of great value, you get those courses out there. People are able to buy them whenever they want and so it can become more of like a passive income type um, thing once you put in the work beforehand. But the thing that I love most about this is I'm able to help other individuals that um, are currently in a position that I found myself in a few years ago. I'm able to provide insight and value and help them get to where I currently am and it's a really fulfilling thing to do. So I definitely don't recommend becoming a guru or only selling courses. I feel like courses should not make up um, much more than, than this 18% of your revenue because then you kind of enter that realm of being a guru rather than a practitioner. And so I personally feel like you should always focus on your agency first, but having these courses out there is a great way to add some additional revenue to your business. All right, so before I go into the top two most important sources of income for me, if you found any value in this video, please be sure to hit that like button below and consider subscribing if you want more videos like this. All right, so my second biggest source of income is obvious and that is my web design and development projects. So I've got a team that does all the execution on this. I've got a project manager, I've got a designer and a developer. And so most of what I'm doing with this portion of my business is finding clients, selling them, signing them, and then passing it off to my team. So this is a fairly substantial percentage of my income. Um, last I checked in preparation for this video, it was about 28% um, of my total income. And this is a really profitable way to make money as a web designer. There are a few cons to it. Um, I find that this often is the bottleneck in my business, meaning that sometimes projects take longer than you want them to. Sometimes the scope gets larger or smaller and it's hard to kind of track and, and predict what exactly is going to happen um, as you are running the or, or completing these projects. But at the end of the day, it is very, very profitable, especially if you can find ways to speed up your processes and increase your prices and find clients more consistently. This can become a substantial amount for you every single month. And so I highly recommend doing this. Even if you have a full-time job as a web designer, doing client projects on the side can become extremely profitable and you can easily pull in an extra two, five, 10, even $15,000 per month just doing a few extra projects. All right, so let's talk about my number one most profitable source of income, and that is SEO. So there's a reason that I teach SEO to web designers, and that is because it is the best way to not only generate good amounts of revenue, but it's consistent and it's predictable and it happens every single month. So an SEO campaign basically is a 12 month campaign and then clients can continue after that 12 months, but a 12 month campaign of us executing specific work and adjustments on their website to optimize it so it ranks on Google. Now the nice part about this is, again it's a 12 month agreement so people are paying you every single month for the first 12 months and usually my prices range from anywhere from $500 a month to $8,000 a month. And so this is a pretty significant amount, especially knowing going into the next month that you know ad revenue can go up and down. Uh, web design projects can, sometimes I've got five at a time, sometimes I only have one new one every month. And so those uh, fluctuate a lot, but SEO is consistent. I know every single month that I'm going to make X amount this month from my SEO campaigns. And so it is kind of the baseline of my business. And it's something that I try to put the most focus on 
because it is the most profitable. In fact, SEO makes up over 35% of my overall income every month. And so it is significant. Um, again, it can fluctuate a little bit because sometimes I reach the end of a 12 month campaign or sometimes I have four or five new SEO clients come on in a month and there's a huge increase. But overall, I highly recommend incorporating some sort of monthly recurring service like SEO because it is easy to build that up to become the most substantial percentage of your of what you're making and taking home every single month. All right, so you've stuck around to the end and I wanna keep this really brief, but this is my number one tip for you as a web designer, whether you have a nine to five job or you're a freelancer, but here's my number one tip for how to spend your money in the best way possible. Now, I've thought a lot about this as I'm looking into investing my money more, um, and you may know this already, but if you keep your money in a savings account, typically speaking, you're getting a very, very small return on that money. In fact, I think the average is about a 0 0.06 return on your money. So virtually nothing, right? Like you're not going to become rich off of that. Now, in most investment accounts, for example, mine in the S&P 500, the average usually bounces around eight to 9% if you're lucky, and that's over a really long period of time. And for a lot of people, that's considered a really great return on your investment. Sometimes real estate can get you upwards of 10, even 20%. Uh, and again, because I don't know a whole lot about that, it might even be more. But you can see how there are different levels of return on your money. And these are the things that you want to spend your money in. But with that said, the best possible investment that you can make is in yourself and your business, which really are one and the same. Because the crazy thing is you can look at this 0.06% return in a savings account, an 8% return in an investment account, a 10% return in real estate. I have found that it is possible to have over a 1,000% return on your investment if you invest in yourself and in your business. This is investing in your knowledge, in books, in courses, in mentorships. But even aside from that, just investing in good people, hiring good team members, finding partners, um, doing the right things and making the right moves to help grow your business. And so what I would tell you, if you have very limited money, rather than just letting it sit in your savings account or even investing it on Robinhood, I would say look for ways to invest your money back into yourself to help you then improve your skills and by doing this, I promise you that that's going to, to yield the biggest return for you and you're going to be able to grow your business, make more money every month, and provide the lifestyle that you want to live. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And again, if you found any value at all, please smash that like button below. It lets me know what kind of videos you like to see and we will catch you in the next one.